Hi everyone, I'm Nancy. And I'm Stephanie. And if you enjoy our show, please like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell. We're also on Instagram at Sidley Twins, and you can also find us on X. Today we want to touch on Christopher Boozy and how, with the help of Megan, he is just bringing down this whole house of cards his bullying theory, their whole online harassment thing that he did in Netflix. The worst thing that ever happened to Harry and Meghan was bringing this guy on board and having him in their documentary. Because what it did was it now there's a link to him wherever they go, whatever he does from now on, whether it be 10, 20 years down the line, he will always be connected to their name. Every time a story runs about him, you will see Harry and Meghan next to his name, whether anybody likes it or not because of that Netflix special. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. But for them to have him, of all people, be an expert, like that to me is so delicious that, again, this house of cards well, is just falling. It also just shows Meghan and Harry's delusion. Yeah. Like if this is your top tier dude, yeah. <laughs> there's not much more behind the, yeah. the curtain there. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Quick backstory for those of you who don't know. Uh, this dude came up with this silly little program. I don't know, called Bot Sentinel. This was before we started our YouTube Twin Talk page. But I guess he was trying to out people that were supposedly going after Megan. But it turns out that a lot of the people that were making videos about Megan, it all was true. He was basically trying to suppress people's free speech with the help of Megan. Megan was behind the scenes. Well, he was and also Harry. trying to prove that these people were bots when in fact yeah. they were actual people. people. See, the problem is then he drew attention to that. Yeah. And then we realized that the people siding with Harry and Megan were in fact the actual bots. Exactly. So he got himself into a world of trouble yeah. trying to prove that we were all fake. And Thank you again, because we, you know, one of the reasons was starting this page was because of elder abuse and our love for the queen mm -hmm. and Prince Philip. And we didn't think it was fair how they were treated the last couple of years of their life. But it was also trying to show that, hey, we're not bots. We're real people. We're willing to share our lives with you. OK, yeah. hi. There's and it's lots not, of us. Yeah. <laughs> and stop giving us this whole alt-right dog whistle crap okay you can't do that either okay we're liberals from portland oregon and we think they suck Megan yeah. and harry okay <laughs> yeah so we're like, pro monarchy yeah it's like dude like i don't know where you're getting any of that but a lot I, of yeah. people were getting picked on mm -hmm. and a lot of people were feeling less confident about their views because they were just getting harassed by this boozy guy mm -hmm. so then he starts this thing called Spoutable, and it was another platform that was supposed to compete with Twitter. And it was really funny at first because people like Joanne Reed from MSNBC, Jason Alexander from Seinfeld, this broke my heart oh, when he no. did it. He was like, he, he was like, I'm going to Spoutable. He oh, thought- I didn't know any of that. I think he just thought in his head, like a bunch of like-minded people were gonna go over there mm -hmm. and like there was gonna be this movement. Little did they know yeah. it was a complete fail. So his- it seems like a con, like a con of some yeah, sort or I, scam or something. Well, it turned out to be, and I'm not gonna get in the weeds. If you wanna see really in-depth videos on this and really good videos on this, go over to Royal Griff. She does excellent work picking this guy apart. It's brilliant. P picking Christopher Boozy apart. Yeah, it's great. Spoutable, all that stuff. Online bots. We even have a little clip from her latest episode on that and uh, just proving about the whole online harassment. And this has to do with Princess Catherine. So Boozy decided to go after Princess Catherine and get on this whole Where's Kate bandwagon. So whenever I see him sort of like pressing an issue, Again, it makes me think, okay, well, then he must be following orders. Mm -hmm. And whose orders is he following? Megan's, obviously, because 
she's crazy. Allegedly. So Boosie is on the radar of a lot of people, but he managed to piss off Richard Eden. Richard Eden was recently on this show called Palace Confidential. I really like it. Uh, Rebecca English was also on with him. And I've never seen Richard Eden so mad in my life, okay? This guy is like an accredited journalist. And Boozy really made him mad. So I'm going to play this. Stephanie hasn't seen this. But just what he says is like perfect. Uh, Richard, you touched on it. We've You've commented on the reactions of various celebrities and public figures on social media in the run-up to Catherine's video. I think I've seen Kim Kardashian... Um, Blake Lively, among others. Mm -hmm. One person stands out, a gentleman by the name of Christopher Boozy. Why is that? God, just the mention of that man's name annoys me. I mean, my goodness. Sorry, it's, it's here on the cards. I have yeah, to. <laughs> he's been yeah. engaging with me on social media as well. Really? And this is, um, he is actually, in terms of the lives of Harry and Meghan, he is actually quite an important figure. And I say that because... You might remember their three-part um, dire Netflix series that we all had to watch. I do remember it. <laughs> he featured heavily. Um, he's a tech boss, American tech boss. I think he became involved with Harry and Meghan because he was interested. He, I think he'd made some positive comment about them and then was really interested in the sort of negative response he received. And he started to analyse um, the response and he was um, convinced that there was a lot of sort of organised trolling of them. And as a result, he's become quite involved with Harry and Meghan, certainly a big, a big supporter. But anyway, over recent weeks, he's been one of the most prominent um, proponents of conspiracy theories. You know, and even after Catherine's video, I mean, there she was, you know, filmed in the garden. It's filmed by this BBC crew, you know, and then he's still questioning and everything and then talking about how the images we'd seen of them visiting a farm shop couldn't have been correct because she looked much healthier in in the in this video and all my this question sort of is stuff. who's got time to spend worrying to spend analyzing that kind of stuff well in a way it's sort of his job because because he's this tech was he's got this firm that kind of analyzes all this stuff and it, but he's been really pushing it and he lots of the stuff he's said and in the past is unpleasant you know it's personal um, and then I think often he claims racism because he's black and he's often says, oh, you're out to get me because I'm black or whatever. And you just think, shut up, you're just a very annoying man. I think he revels slightly in the notoriety as a lot of the people have around this. But I think what was amazing is about Catherine's video message was how dignified and how classy it was. Mm. And I think that they don't really need to say anything because it's such a direct counterbalance to the kind of rabid... Um, you know, musings um, of, on social media of these kind of conspiracy, you know, spreaders. So I think actually they've come up with the most dignified and appropriate response they could. It, it, I mean, I it think, just feels like there's no response that would be satisfactory. I, I think you've hit the nail on the head, yeah. Joe. absolutely. Well, I think Harry and Meghan's sort of loathing of mainstream media as such has, has led them, you know, into bed with figures um, like Boozy and, and, and that's worrying, you know, to f have someone like him featured so heavily in your own series, I, I think is disturbing. So that says it right there. I mean, the fact that now we can openly say that he is annoying, he <laughs> uses the race card and uh, having Harry and Meghan attached to them is n not a good thing. Yeah. And, you know, pretty much being diplomatic, you know, Rebecca English has to be very diplomatic. And she basically said that, you know, everything that Princess Catherine said and did was so dignified. And to he bring said it in this, a calm way, too. <laughs> yeah, to bring this man, this yeah. pawn scum into the mix, you know, and then have Meghan and Harry hide behind the, well, we don't believe in online bullying and I don't go online because I can't stand it and all this yeah. stuff. Basically, the people that freak out about that are the people that just want things censored. So if things are negative about them, it gets censored. But if things are positive about them, it doesn't. That's, they just want to control the narrative. And I really do think Megan got herself really deep with this guy. And obviously, she saw an opportunity before the cancer diagnosis to say, we can make 
Princess Catherine look terrible. Well, even we can make her look like a liar, yeah. a monster. Like, what is she hiding? Let's start a conspiracy theory so when I launch my thing, people will trust me. Yeah. And even before the queen passed away, she saw an opportunity with Boozy because he was uh, a heavy, heavy role in that Netflix documentary of theirs. And that was filmed before the queen passed away. Yeah. We all have to remember this too. Meghan and Harry can nip this in the bud right now. It will take a short statement from their little Sussex squad.com, whatever website that they have, and just say, we denounce any kind of online hate towards the royal family, period. Yeah, they could do that. All they that's all they have to do. But then they'll turn but around and say, then they'll turn around and say, well, how come the royal family doesn't denounce all the online hate against Megan? Right. Well, there's a difference. Nobody's hating on me. I mean, yes, there are some people, oh, some people. that shouldn't say certain things and go overboard. Don't about attack Megan. the looks. But there are people that have shows like us that are just saying this is what happened, and it's we're telling the truth. We're not. We're not here. This isn't a Megan hate page. Okay, I can't help it if Megan is at the top of the pop culture uh, pyramid right now. right now. Yeah, like it's not my fault. But they could they could nip this in the bud and they just won't do it because yeah. they do have a lot of minions. I call them minions. They, they have a lot minions. of minions working for them yeah. like Boozy and they don't want to lose that. Let's hear what uh, Megan had to say during her South by Southwest panel about this nonsense. And at the same time, it's a platform that has quite a bit of hate and rhetoric and incentivizes people to create pages where they can churn out very, very inciting comments and conspiracy theories that can have a tremendously negative effect on someone's mental health. So obviously that was a woe is me moment and it was before the cancer diagnosis. So she was trying to make herself the victim. I mean, this seriously blew up in her face. I'm sorry, but Meghan Markle talking about online bullying is like the Saudi government lecturing us on feminism. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, it's not, it's not, we're not buying it, honey. Yeah. Just stop talking about it. All right. Because you're the one behind it. So the Royal Griff recently put out a video and I want to play a little bit of a part where she sort of like breaks down the uh, hashtags and all the stuff going on. And uh, I'll then put the link to the video in the description below. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the Royal Griff. She has an amazing page. Prince William and Princess Catherine were on top of the world dominating headlines. But what soon happened after that? Well, we see trending Prince of Pegging and KKK Kate trending as well. Those two hashtags. So I was curious to see, you know, what was going on here. So I went ahead and did an analysis on those two hashtags. Keep in mind that the Worldwide Privacy Tour had been trending for a couple of days. And in order to knock that off the list, of course, the Sewer Rats put together a campaign in which the campaign was predominantly getting Prince of Pegging and KK Kate Kate trending. So as you can see here on the right, those are the hashtags that the Sussex Squad had put together in order to push out. And as you can see from the bottom there, this report that was run was covering seven days. So it began on February 20th. And then it went till March 1st. And as you can see here on the 21st, there was a massive, massive retweet going on on the 21st. And that would be for the Prince of Pegging. 3,619 retweets or want to say tweeting out to get the trending spot for Prince of Pegging. And the users that contributed to getting this trending are as the follows. So when we look at this, we have Maria Maria 4848 sending out 286 tweets with the hashtag Prince of Pegging. That's a lot, right? On the flip side, when you look at the most influentials of retweets or mentions received in tweets, meaning that hashtag, hashtag Prince of Pegging, was contained in any of that messaging communication. You have people like Ian Sexton, Sarah Data, this account called Honey, all having some kind of engagement surrounding this hashtag Prince of Pegging also referring to Prince William. So I wish I was that smart, but I'm not. But it just goes <laughs> to show you that, yes, it, there is, you're right, Megan, there is bullying and it does mess with people's mental health. And there are two people that have gotten the brunt of it in the last, I don't know, five years. And that's King Charles and Princess Catherine. So it is a fact that stress does in fact cause disease and it doesn't help when you are sick. It doesn't help your body, it doesn't help your immune system, it doesn't help anything. So 
I really do think that the House of Cards is finally just falling. And if you want to see the tweet of Boozy complaining about <laughs> um this is the this is the tweet that it's Richard the, Eden mentioned yeah. and this is victimhood. The, this is the fun. The Daily Mail is now putting my family at risk with this racist targeted harassment. Boozy, is there any proof that this has to do with race? Well, Omid did the same thing when Endgame came out. He said, they're targeting my family. They're coming after my family. Well, guess what? You know you know whose family was targeted after they, they were called the R word? Princess Catherine. Yeah. it's <laughs> Her family was targeted. Yeah. I mean, guys, it, the, oh. you, can't, you can't cry victimhood now after you did the exact same thing. And there's a reason why we have not seen Megan or Harry since the announcement. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is going to be really tough to navigate at this point because it really is proving that it was them who did it, yeah. the conspiracy theories. And it also shows that, of course, they're not in the fold. They sort of touched on Palace Confidential about Harry and Meghan not knowing about the diagnosis. And Rebecca English, who is probably the most diplomatic person I have ever known as far as journalism goes, she even said, she goes, oh God, they would never no. be told. No. No. And that no. just goes to show their character. Because could you imagine having a brother or a sister that you can't tell your private health concerns to, or you can't tell even any kind of private information or, or that person's just going to tell it to the whole world. I mean, put yourself yeah. in William's shoes right now. The stress and the oh. weight is just going like this. Yeah. And again, you touched on immune systems. Give them a break. So I, I think it's a good thing that Megan and Harry are staying behind closed doors yeah. right now, but you, Nancy does have her theory. Megan might launch. She might launch. Well, we don't know. Well, she has to launch because either no, no, way, no, this weekend, it was, I'm sorry. This oh, yeah, weekend, no, I, right. she, yeah. either way, she's got to launch because something's got to happen. No, no, at no, this no. Point. you're right. You're they right. have no money. No, you're right. But Boozy and their connection mm -hmm. will never go away. Yes. It's a beautiful thing. We just had to wait. Like I said, patience is always virtue. Ooh, always yeah. wait. You're the company you keep. That's for sure. But now forever will they be linked together and he will always be known as a vile, vile troll that harassed a woman with cancer. And then when he found out that she had cancer, continued to harass her. Today's animal rescue is Let's Adopt International. This guy actually started it in Istanbul, Turkey, and he is amazing. This, uh, he calls it extreme rescue and he takes injured animals with like traumatic injuries and they give them the best veterinary care they can and uh, i really want you guys to go on to this website and read about it it's it, a, a, an amazing story i mean i can't get into it it would be an entire show but uh please go take a look i'll put the link in the description below give them some love if you can if you can't just learn a little bit about them and share it with friends and family does make a difference. So, <laughs> do you see what happened to Miss Peaches? I did. Okay, I did. We'll talk about that yeah, during our yeah. live. Don't leave, leave, don't leave chewing gum out, kids. For the love of God, don't, don't leave, leave chewing, chewing gum, gum out. <laughs> Your dogs might eat it. Yes, but don't worry, Miss Peaches is fine. She's fine. All right. So, all right, guys. Well, we love you, and yeah, we'll, we'll see, see you, you soon. soon. Bye.